So we go on. Ready? <laughs> Good. So uh, one thing I wanted to say, right, so you saw this one, right, that you can put it into another variable, and you can just use it because it's just an object. Now, I have, an, uh, I have one more exercise for you. So everybody asked for having quote yeah. in the string. So let's jump and do that. So I want you to now extend the string parser to allow escaping of, of quotes mm -hmm. the small talk way. Mm -hmm. It means that now I would like to allow inside the, uh, to only two quotes after another, never one quote. Right? So this is the task. Is, is the task clear? Yes. OK, now let's do it. But let's think very simple, right? So think what is allowed. What do you want to have where? So you definitely want to start with one character mm -hmm. that is the, the quote. Then in your current implementation, you have any, uh, like you have the quote negate star, which means anything but quote. And then you finish with a quote. Now, in the middle, you need to somehow tell it that, oh, actually, some kind of quote is allowed. Now, I'll let you decide what kind of quotes that is. Hmm? Questions? So I, I let you like two or three minutes to fix, to look into that. Are we on? I don't know. <laughs> Got it! Ha! <laughs> <laughs> One happy guy. <laughs> no, no, no. You, you tell me. Tell, tell me what's the problem. So what, what the thing is, right? So we say we don't want a quote. Or we want two quotes. Exactly, right? So you can transform it instead of saying we don't want a quote, but in the case of like something like this, if we have it, you transform the sentence in saying, we don't want to co quote, or unless we already have two quotes. Right? So if you have two quotes, th what is that two quotes? Well, those are just two characters. Character quote and character quote. Right? How do you specify that you can parse two characters in a row? This is one, or the other possibility is to have a string, no. right, as parser. Except that there you have to be really careful in the amount of quotes that you're putting. right? And then that's it, right? So you have either I parse two quotes, or I don't want any code at all. So this is the test, right? So the test is that I want to have three quotes, Q, U, four quotes, U-O-T-E, and then three quotes, right? So inside, there are four quotes in here. They should work. And if there are just two quotes inside, it should not work. Right? So because it's small talk, right? So I have to escape this if it's in a small talk string. P problems there? It's, there's some sort of puzzle in here. I mean, this is the, po the first thing. And then when we did flatten of, uh, of this, we still get the double quotes. I mean, the triple, the but quote take quotes, the yes? quotes um, at the start when uh, as the output of the parse. But so what's the what's the That's here you're taking the the, the, the the second the one? The quotes, right? No, the the outer quotes exactly, and then yeah. it does that. No, it doesn't because we get can you show me? Wait and flatten in here. Yeah. It, but if it flattens now, it will put it into a small talk string. So you'll have four strings again, four quotes. When you print it, you will print oh. it. And this oh. is why you have the small talk string. Oh, okay. Right? OK, yeah. okay. so you got it. It's fine. Very cool. Yes. Ready? What's, what is this here? Are you ready? You're not ready. Uh, I'm not ready. I'm trying, I'm not, ready. not that, the other slash. This slash? That slash is choice, right? Okay. So you want that, or dollar quote as parser, dollar quote as parser. Comma? Delete. No, 
bat delete, not the backspace. Nah. Parser, just delete the quote that oh. follows. Okay. And now this whole thing multiple times. So no, it's not this one star, but is this one negate. So it's either I don't have a quote, yeah. then delete that. Delete the star or just copy it. Altix. Okay. Now the whole thing, star. Here. From from there all the way to the end. To the end, right? And then you will also need another quote as parser. Oops. I can, oh, I, that's I, I, will, I will type it again, but yeah. that's the point. Do you understand now? I, I, un I understand. I okay. This is the, now, now I'm at the stage of not knowing Good. all Good. Sure. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Good. Are there problems, questions? Um, there's something that's unsealer. It's up in here. So I just have a, s I have a revelation here. Somebody is programming Java. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> For the greater good. <laughs> yes, exactly. Uh, are you fine? Yes, I'm trying. You're, You're trying. Good. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll take the example. Is, is it okay? Did you get it working? That one? Yes, no. No? Okay. So let's see. So, how do we write it, right? So we have here, we have here, this is the part that we want to modify, right? This is the part that we want to modify. And in here, we want to have a choice, right? So we want to have either, we say something like this, That's it. So now if I put my quotes in here, right? So if I just put one quote, it should fail. So it just parses the, the beginning of it. And if I put all the quotes, then it still fails. What's wrong? Right, so it works. So, did we understand? Who's puzzled? I want to know who's still puzzled. Now it's okay to be puzzled because this is how we learn. Please tell me who's puzzled. Puzzled, one, two, three. Okay, but those puzzled, please raise your, your, your eyes. Raise your eyes, okay, thank you, yes. Wait, why do I have four quotes in the middle when I print it? So let's inspect that. That's a good idea. So 39 is the quote. I have two. So when I printed it, I printed a small talk string, right? So hence, you have the four characters. Yes, I could, but yeah, that's the point. Anything else? Any other things? So the, is, it, is it okay? I mean, except for the fact that you have all these many quotes. Other than that, it's pretty straightforward, right? So don't just think of what you want to have. So again, the, the, the parenthesis here reads in the following way. So it's either I have two quotes following, each following consec consequ how to say, consecutively, or I don't have any quotes. And that's the rule. That's all. And then I want to have this many times until, uh, and at the end, I, when this one will fail, then I want it to be followed by one quote. OK? Yes? So can I let it fail if there's unread input? Unread input, right? Exactly. So now we had this problem here. Let's see. That, so now I put only one quote, right? And it still doesn't fail, but it just returns me Q and U. Yeah. This is because by default, 
the parser will, if it will succeed in doing something, it will just do that. Right? Now, if I want to tell it that it should consume everything, I have this nice little thing. It says, please go all the way to the end. Right, my old effect has gone, right? So typically, your parcel will, will, will typically have everything out to the end. Now, if you look at this, and anybody here knows what par uh, island parsing means? Island parsing. Island parsing? Island parsing means when you don't have the whole grammar, and you just, but you just want to react to a part of something inside. Right? So negate is your friend when it comes to island parsing. Because basically you want to say, oh, I don't really care about whatever, and only when I have that, please react. Right? So we kind of did something like that inside there. Because we just said, um, when I said dollar, um, dollar quote is parser negate, I said, well, I, you know, I just want to react only when you give me a one quote at the end. And that's it. And everything in between I want to flatten. But anyway, that's a side parenthesis. OK. Everybody has this one in the transcript. I, I come to you. So who does not have this in the transcript? Excellent. Yes, the question? Yes, exactly. So then you would have to, so you have to change how the dollar parser handles dollar parsers than the way that handles other scenarios. Right, but this is not allowed. This is not a valid string. So it's an, so is it an error because I like when I give it back I can't give it an error. It's an error. It's an error. So if you inspect it, it's a PP failure. But you have to put end, right? So it's you have to force it to parse all the way to the end, oh. right? So this is an operator. This is one of these actions that you can, uh, one of the. So it's one of these predicates, right? So we have the predicate not was the unconsuming one, negate was consuming, and we have end, which says go all the way to the end. There are some others that are quite interesting, but you, you find them in the PP parser class. OK? Good. So now we have our quote. No default action. So it's basically as if you would put like on top is uh, the block would return the input. So the default action is print the string. Print, print what you printed. So for example, when you parse a character, then the result will be by default a character. If you parse a string, then the result will be an array of characters. If you parse a digit, the result will be a number. So, so like that uh, will be still a character, okay? Hmm? Good. Okay, <clears throat> ready? Everybody ready? Okay, this is the next task. Now here we're talking about so this what we're describing here. This is a reduced grammar of the MSC format. So the MSC format is the format that comes with Moose. This is the textual format that we use to serialize data. It's a reduced grammar. So this is the BNF notation of the grammar. OK. This is your test case. This is the input that should parse. So I want you now to write that one. So that's why it was important that your, your code was in the same workspace, because I want you to build on top of that. Now, if you look into this, so you, you have here number, right? So you basically translated this into the grammar, except that you didn't deal with you didn't deal with the small e probably. You have digit and letter and com comment we can skip. So digit and letter you have them already in petit parser, right? So hash digit hash letter they are already provided. String you've already done. 
right? So we've done that. Now you have to move up. So if you look into this, basically this is the identifier. You've done that. Then we have, so simple name. Then we have element name, which is a slightly more complex. So you want to parse something like famix dot package, right? At the, mo at the beginning, maybe you can even simplify the whole thing and have a without a dot in here or something like that, if you don't feel like implementing that. And then you move up. So here is like two characters, so parentheses, parentheses. And these are the basic, these are the basic ones, right? Then, uh, the way you start, you start with the open parentheses, you have an element, then multiple times, and you close. You have a close parentheses, that those are characters. Then, an element node, right? So we are here. The element node has an open element name and has multiple attributes, so you can put multiple attributes in here. In this case, it's just one attribute. The attribute, again, starts with a parenthesis, so it's like a list. Or maybe you're more familiar with the array format of, of Smalltalk. Uh, it's the same thing. Um, yeah, so you, ha you start the attribute, you start with an open, this, value node, and so on. And then a value node can be either a primitive or another element, and the primitive can be a string or a number, and then basically there almost everything in the rest you already have. So, so you have to put it together. I would use dollar parentheses at the moment. There's no real reason. Okay. Questions? Yes? Right, so matches is the one thing that says true or false instead of actually printing the result. So you can use it as a regasp mm, matcher. Yeah. It's false and false. Sorry? It must pass everything. It, mu it must match, right. right. So it's like saying that the result is not PP failure. Yeah, but does it need to go to the end? If, no, it's the parser. So it's, uh, if you specify that the parser must consume all everything until the end, then yes. If no, then no. By default, is no. So if you put end, then it's end. Okay? So this is it starts in a string, right? So it's a string, parentheses, and then it's just another normal string. Mm -hmm. Okay? So do we jump first? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Go ahead. It's quarter to five. I'd say I give you fifteen minutes. It's 10 to 5? Uh. Okay, so if you have questions, please raise your hand, right? So when you, whenever you jump into something that you might have a problem with, please tell me. It's something I find I'm writing Pascal. Pascal? Why? Because I have to put, all the, uh, I have to put it in reverse order. <laughs> oh, right. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so? Okay. Should I, do you want me to send you the, do, do you see well the grammar? Yeah. Right? So you don't need it. Okay, closer. Fine. <sighs> I have to go and drink something. So what I'm doing is I'm like saying MSC equals this, uh -huh. and, and then I'll start. Exactly, yeah. yeah. Build, build it up. Exactly. Yeah, Perfect. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. Questions? Mm -hmm. Okay. 
<laughs> questions? Uh, no questions. No? Good. Oh? It's, uh, actually, I've been trying to find the uh, user already written in the parser, right? Like uh, digit. Digit is written, is there. Comment is there. You build string, you oh, build so number. Not, they're not all there? Oh, I got it. Right? But the ones that are in capitals, they're all, they're not included? They're not included, oh but yeah. not all of them, <coughs> right? So you, you build string, you build number. Right. You did it yourself, right? Oh, that's right, of course. I already right? got it here. So you had that. You also have the, the ID, the identifier, if you still have it somewhere. Uh, uh, that's that one, hash letter followed by... Uh, letter or digit star yeah, right it was the, that's a simple name mm -hmm. you'll just read that right so it's letter parentheses letter or digit star mm -hmm. right 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 okay. so that's you just translate it into into basically into pretty into into pretty parser so just write it in the same okay. in the same uh, in the same yeah, workspace I guess I'll start with the uh, no but delete those right the, the pars and those that you don't need those no no because you just want the definitions you want you might want that, but yeah. But I mean, I won't probably want to start with uh, where I'm going to end. Mm -hmm. Exactly. You start from the end and you build it up. Yeah. Exactly. Thank you very much. How's it going? Hey, fun. Fantastic. Cool. Fantastic. <laughs> cool. Yeah. Cool. I don't know. What's up? Okay. It's okay. Like Comment? Yeah, I think so. It means not. No, 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 but it's like at this point, so I can't do the whole thing. Right? I don't know. It, it doesn't matter. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I went looking at it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Good. So, how do we stand? Uh, As parser. Yeah. As parser. Right? Yeah. Never forget as parser. So, Peter, Igor has a very good question. What's the question? Where's white space? Right. So you remember that there was this uh, action called trim? Yeah. Trim means consume the space to the left and to the right. You also have trim left, you have to trim light, you have trim spaces. So trim will trim white spaces. No, I get, I get that, but, but you've, you've missed it out of the grammar. So right. No, in this, in this one, it means everything that is not uh, specified is as much waste space as you want. Okay. And any white space. So enter, tab, space. So what are the two strategies? How do you approach the problem? I want, I want an attention, please. So who is starting from the top? Who's starting from the top to the bottom? No, I mean from there to the bottom. Who's starting from the bottom to the top? Right? The advantage of starting from the bottom to the top is that you, you always, every at all times, it is testable. Right? Right? You can write your parsers as you go. Right? So that's one thing that you might want to remember. It's not, it's not wrong to go from the top to the, to the bottom. Right? Especially this one. It's not a large grammar. But for larger grammars, you might want to approach it in a different way. Uh, I, I don't know. I don't know. Wait, so what's the problem? So somebody discovered the loop. Anybody else discovered the loop? Right? So what do we do about the loop? But, I mean, you have to put the parser there and then... I mean, when I create the parser, I'm defining it already, right? So look. So what do I do? Any ideas? What would you do if you would have to implement it in Smalltalk? A collection of, yeah, what? So, I mean, the point here, the problem here goes like this, right? So, we have, we have, um, 
value node that points to element node, and element node blah blah blah, and then needs value node, right? So it means that at this point, element node must be defined, but then also value node must be defined over here. So how do you do it in no single workspace? How would you do it? The temporary what? And then, how do you would you replace what? What would you put in there? I mean, you would you would do a become, right? There would be one, or if you would already have a built-in wrapper, right? You could use that wrapper for to, to store the reference and then just input the implementation inside at a later time, right? So basically, for example, just for uh, as an example here, you have string text. Look here. And now if I want to define string text before and then have the implementation afterwards, I can do something like this. PP unresolved parser new, right? And then I use def, right? Which basically means put the implementation. This is the implementation that goes in there, right? OK, so this is how you solve this problem. Is there, is there, is there a shortcut on symbols? Is there a slash and this and this and this? No, 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 there, there's not. That's good, yeah. That's a good idea, actually. Um, hmm. So everybody got that? So it's PP unresolved parser new. And then instead of using equal, you just say def column. So to define the value of that one, right? Are we fine? Can I switch it back to the grammar so that you can see the grammar? Right. Can I switch it back? So PP unresolved parser new, and then you use the def. So who did not get this one on the workspace now? PP unresolved parser new. OK, so I switch it back. So this is the grammar. You still have five minutes left. <laughs> well, I didn't say in which time, so it's in my <laughs> time dimension. <coughs> oh, I always wanted to do that. Um, for those that are listening and are not here, please follow the same exercise in the same real time. <laughs> This one here? No. Yeah. Element yeah. space. So this is the, what's in the next one? Yeah. What's the one? This is inside. Yeah. Thank you. You see, this is why text is really not debuggable. So um, you're going to give us back a minute for while we put the grammar right now. Ah, maybe. Maybe. Huh? Which one? The question mark. Uh, optional. So a question mark means optional, right? But you've you've done that, right? So. You should be pretty much done with this part by now. So who's not done with element name to this variation? OK. Who else is not done with it? Don't be afraid to raise your hands. Please raise your hand. So who is not done with element name? OK, one, two. OK, and who's, who's done with the, who's, who's working now on value node? Or on, uh, yeah, value node. 
Anybody has that one working? Right, so almost done you are, okay. Yes, Yannick. Okay. Questions, but problems? No, no, just. So I'm here not, we I'm said that the value. I'm, I'm not very really organized, so. Right, <laughs> value node, here you have to use. This is not a right. uh, value, no value node, you have yeah. to use the def, sure. right? And you have to initialize it with, exactly. Mm -hmm. Very good, very good. How do I reach these guys? How do we stand? Oh, yeah. oh that's good. Could you do that? Don't worry, don't worry. Okay. Questions? Do you have questions? Okay. Good. Okay. No problem. Should we, should we flatter everything so that we generate the string? You don't care about string. You don't care about the output. Right now we just care about correctness. Okay, so, so I can remove all this flattening and, and this block with the block. Basically. You can, you can remove the block, the, the actions, and the flatten part. This is not your, not your constraint. Right? So the element the element mark means it's either there or it's not? Uh, it's optional. So the element name is just a string? It's a string, right? Like you see there, it's a famix dot package <coughs> should yeah. be parsed by element name. Mm -hmm. <coughs> you, can, you, you can put element name inside of your simple name. Because your simple name can have a of this. I agree. Of course. Very good. Yes. So how do we stand? Where is the Going going going. Going where are we? Attribute where are you? Node. Attribute node. Oh, cool. Mm -hmm. Let me know when you're about to be finished. <coughs> uh oh, time is closing. We have two minutes left. But you didn't say what do we win? Because I'm done. <laughs> you're done? So we have one winner here. Let me see. Really, really. I don't teach. I don't. Do you use uh, parse? Uh, no, the user. No, that's not good. No. End. So Put in root end here. Hey, that was a parse of alt, 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 <laughs> alt A print. What? Alt A print. Just. Alt P. So the reason why. One thing, one, one other thing, just a second. So. As you notice here, the input string has white spaces, so you need to clean right? That means that you have to, for example, whenever you have an open like this, it means it must be, you have to also say trim. So if you do character open parentheses as parser, and you say trim, it means it will consume the spaces before and after. As parser, yeah, you send trim to the parser, right? I go true. You've got true. Yes. Did you put end to your? <laughs> is 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 the MSC written in terms of blah blah end? Yeah, I just use it. MSC might be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the the MSC is that ending? Is that force? Is it forcing the end? You mean root end, Mark? Yes, exactly. Root end. <laughs> huh? Trim. Trim is the simplest thing you can get. We are getting into overtime. <laughs> I am training myself to become a manager. It means I have what to. The of a, of a manager? Some, somebody that has a watch. You know what is the definition of manager? Is the one that keeps interrupting you while you are doing the job. I see, I see. Now you have to before you get the max and so on. So?
Yeah, but I, I just wrote it in a line. So. Yeah, I see. That's good. But so I'm not single trim now. Here. Right, <laughs> yeah, I understand. That's why I did it. So, but you apparently you still have one I trim, trim there. Oh, wait, end. Right, it will, try not it will not match, right? Yeah. Fast. So just make sure that you write the trims yeah. around yeah, the parentheses, yeah. basically, around any yeah, of these. Yeah, yeah. Right? Very cool, very cool. Oh, I cannot go get to those guys. Damn. Let me see. So, how do we stand? Oh, I always so wanted to a, see. I've got a, a message not understood. Oh. On? On. Uh, let me see. This thing is getting so easy. Yeah, can you debug? Uh, let's see. Can you do some shortcuts? Yeah, can you debug that? No. No, I mean, not debug that. Uh, oh, just, just, sorry. Just, run oh, oh. just run it. That's not good. I closed the workspace. <gasps> wait, wait, wait. It's this is fine. Right? Oh, cool. Oh, wonderful. Thank you. That's impressive. I like that. Thank you. Parses. What's parses? So it's really, it's at the first character that it's pro yeah, problem. Parses. I've got a literal object parser, and then I've got a um, I've got I've not given it a parser. So it's, it's the at the beginning. Yeah. So it's it's a it's a uh, an open that's not an open. So that's his parser. 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 How do I screw it up? Okay. Oh wait, did you? You have double, double quotes here. Yeah, of course, it's a string. Uh, it's one quote, not double quote. Yeah, you need to do define it. Yeah. That's what the grammar is. Look at that. That's grammar. No, I just copied. <laughs> I see. <laughs> well, no, but that was good. That 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 was good. That string uh, implementation of that you built before. I come. Putting trim only before and after. And Not only that, right? Because uh, it will also be after uh, after this. Everywhere it makes everywhere sense, right? So after the element. So there is no way to say the, the parser is no. parser. So mm, oh, there is. Okay. You can, it's an object, right? So you can traverse all the object tree and you can transform it totally if you want. Cool. Yes. yes. How can I debug uh, that? Because I do that, I have false, and yeah. now I want to debug it. Yeah, no I know, we will get into that. Uh, it's not yet. I, 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 I will show you afterwards, okay. but not now. I, have not, I haven't used this unresolved empty matrix, I don't know why. No, you, you, you put, put an end to it. Yeah. That means try to make it... This, this works, and I have... I have it fixed and, and, and I have all this. Uh, it could be. Can, you, can you do an yeah. Alt A P? You know, that, that's some stuff I don't understand. <laughs> it works, but I don't know why. Wait. <laughs> well, it works because you, you are not asking it to, to be angry. It does. What? I think there's some sort of a workspace magic here. I don't know. <laughs> so it change it from from matches to pars. Yeah, it's fast. So what would you get? <laughs> That's really strange. It shouldn't. I mean, there's no way you can do that. So, uh, kind of have it. Um, Don't forget to say and. Okay, good. Trim and. Sorry. Yeah. I, I, uh, I'm getting a false here yeah. for something stupid, but I can't uh, understand what. It's a word. Uh, you forgot the star. Word is parser star dot. Uh, uh, There's a star. This, this primitive is not. Uh, it's one character. 
<laughs> okay, I can't. It yeah. Was, uh, but part. anyway, that's not correct because it must start with this, with the letter. So the first one is letter as far as this power, and the second one can be letter or digit. Okay, but that's what the grammar. But anyway, it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. But you, you need to start at the end as well. Yeah. At the, at the, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, are we there? No. What's the problem? <coughs> We're getting. Uh, Don't worry. It's fine. So totally missing trims. Uh, yeah, you're definitely missing trims. Uh, but can you check? First of all, this should be end. Uh, yeah. Should yeah end. Force it to end. So, if it's a trim, so that's one. Let's see. This parser is trim. Fine. Now, also here. This is open as far as the element. The element also is uh, element node is also uh, trimmed, right? So this is also a trim element name. Sorry, why is element name? This is trimmed. Simple name is trimmed. Oh no! In this case, yeah, that's uh, that's the one problem with this. Make make the simple name trim, and that's fine. But otherwise, you would be allowed to put a dot inside the element name, and it's not allowed. So mm. here. Right? You see? Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or you can you can just use it where. Oh yeah, you can use it like that instead of putting an element name. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Mm -hmm. Good. Yeah. So try now. Ah, uh, I I have a one word trim here. Uh, no, it's no? not that. Uh, it's the whole thing that you perhaps you put put parentheses ah, yeah, over the whole thing, but that was not the issue. It's not. Because uh, this is just simply stronger than oh yeah this was the issue maybe. Okay. But let's see element also element uh, node. Here also trim at the end, but I already. Have no, that's fine. Yeah, when you're using simple name, you have to. That's fine. So it should work now. Okay, let's see. Why did it expect that three? Um, that's here. Three is. The white space. So it means it can't match any elements at all, right? Basically, it doesn't leave. It doesn't get to the elements. Does it need one or more? Yeah, if we do element node plus, for example. Ah, wait, wait, wait! I think this is the same. Oh, right. Uh -huh. <laughs> that, that was better anyway. <laughs> uh, element name. So we should be, where was that element name? Is here. Right, so if element is here. Oh, you have a trim also at the end of this. Of? Element node. Yes, at the end of the element node, but it's not needed. We should put it at the close and open. Because it means that it's the parenthesis that there's. But there's also in between, no. Here, at the end of the element name, there should be a trim, but there is a trim. And before parenthesis. Uh, I don't see it quite yet. But yeah. don't lose hope. <laughs> because what we will do now, we will learn how to debug this. Okay, so time the overtime is over. Yeah. Who can claim success? One here, two, three. Okay, who has problems with some sort of errors? One, two, three. No, I mean by errors, I mean some strange blah blah expected somewhere that we don't know where it is. So, who? One, two, three. Anybody else? Okay, good. So what we will learn to do next is to ga go the step forward. Okay? So please leave it as it is at the moment. Leave, leave it as it is. And let's focus a bit on, on the bigger picture. Hmm? So this is how my solution looks like. It's here. You can take a look at it. But you will see it's actually already in your image. <laughs> um, so this is how the bigger um, p 
figure grammar looks like. So that's the full grammar of MSE. And this whole thing is already exists in your image. If you want to play at home, you can do that. But I suggest we skip that at the moment. And we move to the, to the next level. So if we think about it, right? So up to now, we were scripting. That's cool when you're prototyping. It's, you get really fast feedback. It's all nice. But it becomes messy, right? I mean, the, the code is long. You already have to start to scroll. And it's messy. So the other thing is that we said that you know, Petit Parser is really deeply embedded in Smalltalk. So what would be a natural match? Where would you put a parser like that? I mean, a parser is made out of these productions or smaller parsers. So if you would have to map it on something in Smalltalk, what would you map it on? A character. <laughs> a character, right. <laughs> yes, so? So you could, you could possibly define a class for the whole parser and have all these instance variables. It would be cool to have them all in methods. Each of them would be a method in a class, right? So already Petit Parser provides exactly that. So um, if you take a look in your image, there is an already existing PPMSE grammar. OK? And the idea here is that basically every, um, we, we, I just took the, the grammar that existed in the, uh, the grammar that existed in the, in, the, in, the tr in the workspace, and every production became simply a method um, in, this, in this class. OK? So let's browse this a bit. Let's browse this PPMSE grammar and see how it looks like. So I'll just open. I'll open the grammar, right? Now, one thing you have to tell this this class, right? It's just a collection of parsers. You have to tell it where should it start. If you would say PPMSE grammar parse something, where should it start? So the first thing you do is um, this is how the grammar looks like. So the, the resulting grammar in the workspace looks like. And so you see at the end, we have elements, right? This is, um, this is the end. This is the root of the previous one, right? So elements. Now this turned out, so we just took that command and we, s we overwrite start. Right? So start is a special class that is there is a super implementation of it. And it just returns elements end. Now, elements is an instance variable, right? So there is a bit of magic. You know, we live in some reflection land. And there is a bit of magic going on. And this magically will map to the method with the same name, right? So we have here elements. Is, this is the definition, right? Open, element, star, close. Yes, it does. Because basically, this is what it does behind. So in fact, the reason why you need this, uh, you, you want to have, we, there is this mapping on. So first is that it removes the need for that undef. The other reason is that you, you, it, with instance variables, you have the caching. Right? So uh, that means that you won't have to create the parsers on the fly. So you just create one time the parser graph, and then you just use that one. So you gain a lot of speed like that. OK? So this is what happens behi behind, the behind, the se behind the scenes. And all you have to do is to take your grammar and subclasses for PP composite parser. OK? Now, as an exercise, please, I would ask you to do the following, just so that you see how it is, and then we'll see what kind of problems you bump into. So we take this simple, um, I won't have you go through the whole grammar and translate that one into the existing one because it already exists. But just for an exercise, take the, um, take the natural, the number grammar, the number parser, and create, um, create your own subclass of PP composite parser. Override the start method with this production here, or 
with the number end, and then have three methods, natural, e, and the number, in, your, um, in this new class. And at the end, what we will say, we will say something like, um, my class, so my uh, number parser parse, uh, and then you'll give the number. Uh, no. Okay, so please do that. So please implement my number parser as a subclass of um, PP, as a subclass of PP composite parser. So create your own category, create a new class, and start to put these these meth these productions into own methods. Okay. Who's with me? Okay. Questions? No. So let's do that. Sorry? Instant side, right? It's instant side. <coughs> Ignore names is for implementation reasons to not inc so that you can store stuff in there so but not. Yeah, this is very similar to what uh, Gilad and I did. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I just lost the image, uh, which, which is a super class for my name. PP Composite Parser. Okay. Are we okay? Yeah. But you, you, you should already have that. Don't yeah, but uh, another one. Oh, that's okay. Yeah, we'll use those. Yeah. As long as, uh, as long as you, and we just want you to go through the process of transforming a script into yeah, yeah, yeah. a method. So, is it working properly? No? Okay, yeah. good. So you see how when you're writing, right, anybody wrote one method at least? One of those methods? Who wrote one method? So um, those, if you wrote one method, then you notice that you just have to say you're writing your instance variable, and then it says, well, define it as an instance, because uh, it will be read. Define it as an instance variable. You just say yes, and you don't care. Yep. Right? And you move on. You just have to make sure that every, all of those are defined. That's it. Right. No, that's it. it no, it, you only need an instance variable if you're referring to okay. a, com, uh, a, a custom parser that you had to cache before. And the initialization is separate. Yeah, it's basically you will have it, three instance variables. Those that are the the, the workspace variables that you have in your script, yeah, they will become. Right. That's it. So for the terminals, there is nothing. We, we just return the parser. But it's. Uh, Yes, exactly. You return, right? So it's important that you return. So, who's 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 who has done? Who is on the way? Still on the way? Three more minutes left. So the, the magic is straightforward. It's not difficult. Yes. What do you mean? So it's uh, an attempt to produce a, like an optimized patch up parser for your Oh, I, I don't know. I don't know. I'm, I'm close, but do you want these to be instance variables? No, those, they, you don't need that. This is an instance variable, right? Just natural. Yes, because you j when, whenever you need an instance variable, you need. So in that number, you also have two. One, two. And they, will, they have but to but match an, an existing method. Yeah, but e e e, e is, an, is an instance variable. Yeah, e is an instance variable. And is is has a corresponding method. But do we with natural there is no instance variable needed. Uh, there is no uh, you don't 
you've already look look here in the definition. You already yeah, have natural and e. Yeah, I created those. So exactly. So for number, you don't need one at the moment. But don't I should I have self here or not? No, not self. Not self. That's the magic, right? So you all inside oh. you use the instance variable, and it has to has it has, has to have a, uh, a, a corresponding method. Okay. Now you still have to tell this one. So to be able to to run my number parser, you still have to have a start somewhere to right. say what's the start thing. So you have to override this. You have to override the method called start. That's a special production. Right. And we'll, you will tell this one that that's number end. Oh, so yes, here start. Right. So you have to override that. So I'll just put here. Start. Start. Return. Number end. No, no hash. Right. It's the production number. Okay. Number. Space. End. Uh, meaning that you want to consume the parser to consume the whole thing, declare instance. Because now uh, you're trying to okay. use that, okay. and now try to say this something. My number parser new parse the number that you want to parse. Okay, sure. Let's see that we should work. Yeah, I'll just just a simple one here. So my number tab parser tab yes new, new parse. Hmm, what happened? Uh, should I have two quotes? Or just no, it's fine. Uh, you probably, your, your, your grammar is too eager. You, you have a... I have too much in the grammar, looking yeah. for too many things. You're, you're, you're trying, you're, you're hard coding. You probably, you don't have optional things. Yes, yes. That, that's right? yes. So just try a minus one, two, three, dot, four, five, dot, four, five, E. e. Minus two. Minus two. Right, so then print that. Yes, print that. Two. Two. Good. <laughs> I have an infinite. Uh, uh, alt dot. No, no, <laughs> no, 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 joking. No, joking. <laughs> yes, but uh, and, uh, okay, let's try it again. What's the problem? With my number, okay. Pass, and then it goes in infinite loop. How do I? What and did you pass, do? And pass, and pass, and That's probably because you're calling a self something. Self. Yeah. You're, you're not returning here. I should return. All, yes. all, all of them should return okay. something. Okay. Yes. Then if I say self and then. Yes. Uh, where is my? Okay. All, all of them should do the yes, same. Yes. All, uh, all the other ones. For, for all the others except for start. You see. There is no built-in feature, okay. to. Um, to provide um, on-demand uh, uh, infinite loops, so you have to create uh, them yourself. Okay. <laughs> okay, so who finished? Cool. So now you went. So basically, with this, with this, uh, with this simple exercise, we went by. We went through the idea of we prototyped a small grammar. And then we say, oh, yeah, it looks cool. And now we move them into, we are mapping it on a class, on a small talk class. Right? So it's using this a bit magic of reflection. So you have to have, for each production, you will have a new method. The start is a special production that has to point to, um, to, the, to, the, one, um, to the one production, which is the root production. You typically, in the start, you typically um, put end. So that you have to force the parser to go all the way to the end. All these productions must return <coughs> their parsers inside. And there must be a one-to-one -one relationship between the parsers and uh, the, between the instance variables and the methods, right? So every time you have a method with a production, you ha must have an instance variable with the same name. Yes? <laughs> no, not yet. Um, now, one, one thing you should know. So it is possible, actually, to write, uh, to put there, first of all, sometimes you might have an error that uh, it does not find a certain parser. So you'll get an exception that, oh, this parser I do not find. In which case, the, the issue is that um, you probably forgot to uh, create an instance variable or to define a method. That's what it means. OK, you'll get a bit used to that. So now let's quickly take a look at this MSE grammar, right? 
So the MSC grammar is, is right here. So I have my start method, which in this case is elements end. Then, well, then we go to elements. This one is open, element star. Then you have open, as parser trim. Then you have um, element, right? So it's element here, element name. Attribute, we look at attribute, it has attribute value. We look at attribute value and it has a pointer to element, right? So there is no PP unresolved parsers in this case, right? So for simple things, just for having loops inside, you don't need that because it, a mechanism behind does that for you, right? So it becomes actually easier. So you mean that there are things that uh, this is not enough? Uh, yeah, so for example, sometimes you want to define parsers based on a certain input and generate them and treat them in a special way or manipulate them. So you would want to write an initialized method, maybe want to cache some of the parsers. But for most purposes, this is just fine. Are there questions up to here? So. You, you subclass from PP composite parser. You have the start method. You have, have all of the, um, um, so from outside, if you do now my number parser new and you directly say natural, then you will get the natural parser, right? So the parser that parses natural numbers. And you can just use it in other parsers, right? So you can directly have your object there, which is pretty nice. So from outside, you can always access your parsers through the methods, and inside the must map on instant variables, right? Now, um, what happens if we want to add, so you notice how your grammar does not have any kind of flatten most of the time. It does not have any kind of these nice actions like we had in the string, right? That is, does not really belong to the grammar. So this, this idea of, so we had like here. The idea is here we have the attribute value. The idea of what happens with this should, is, not, is decoupled from the um, correctness of the input. So what do I do with the output is not, it's, it's a different issue and should not be coupled together with, what, with, whether, with whether or not the input is correct. Right? Why? Because I might do different things with the output. So the, the goal of, the, uh, of, of, of a parser is not just to create after syntax trees. The goal of a parser can be also to pretty print or to color highlight. So that means that the result, the result of applying um, the result of applying a parser is just a string exactly of the same size, only formatted in some way. If it's if we're talking about uh, if we're talking about syntax highlighting, right? The result of applying a, a small talk parser on a small talk code is the RB uh, after syntax tree. Fine, but that means that you can use the same grammar and have different outputs. Now this maps in the following way. So you have the same, the following pattern. If you want to produce a parser that does something with the output, you will subclass your grammar, and then you just say super whatever production is, and then you will uh, you will just produce you will just specify what the change is. This is it's it's really cool. It really becomes really really cool, right? So then you can just plug in. So you use normal inheritance for saying, oh, I want to use that grammar. And for this production and that production, I want to affect it in this way or in that way. Right? So, so and you do it. Yes. Uh, no, compiler is subparse is, uh, no, no. Parser is a subclass of grammar. And whether or not. The compiler, the compiler will be a, um, is probably something that uses the output of a parser. Yeah. That's it's not the same. It's not like modifying the output of a parser, because there you have you want to optimize, and every, whenever you want to optimize is a separate step. Here, 
you will get still a tree, right? You're never resolving anything in the parser. Right. The, pro the, the those that produce the, the parts that produce the after syntax tree will be a subclass of the of the small talk grammar. Yes. Right. So, but afterwards, what do you do with the after syntax tree? Because maybe you have to resolve things. Maybe you have to optimize things. That's another. It's another area. It comes afterwards. Okay. So this is a pattern, and so you should always do exactly like that. So that means that you should, in the grammar, ideally, you never have any action, any transformation, uh, any transformation action on the output. Ideally, that means that you factor out as much as you need in the uh, in the subclasses to overwrite. So that you should be able to just say super this, and here this one I want it to flatten to I don't know what, and then you have complete control, and it's a very natural and it's a very fine process. So questions? N now, what I have, what we have here is that so I just have a very simple parser that basically translates the MSC uh, string into uh, an array, a small talk array, just for an exercise. Actually, the result is array that might contain array that might contain array. Yes, it's an array of arrays. Of a, a tree, actually. Yes, it's it's a tree, but it's of arrays. So it's it's but it's uh, what I'm saying is a small talk array. Yes, yes. But uh, my, my question is why uh, would, would it be more efficient to have an actual uh, three object as a result? Absolutely. Except that it will so for for now for for the current purposes to put it in place, it will take longer uh, to play with it. Yeah. So it, you so just need a big there, yes yes exactly. So we have a mechanism that reifies. So if you if you give me a famix.package, it will give you a small talk object back. And do that. So do we have an ex but it would for the purpose of this exercise, you don't need to go into those details. All right? So what yes. One question for the specific uh, discussion. Um, this is the only way to ignore uh, characters. No. We can uh, somehow tell generally that we want to ignore something Oh, you mean how do I create a rule? Um, how do I have a parser and then say, oh, all the production stream, right? Afterwards. Now, I was not going to talk about that, but the cool thing about small of, of of objects is that you just traverse them and do something with them, right? So if you look in in the PP parser, there is this beautiful method called transform which basically deeply traverses the parser tree and applies a certain transformation on every element and returns you the new parser. So um, I'll just show you. I, um, so but first, let's take them one step at a time. OK, so right now we have the parser and we have the grammar. And then I said, how do we, how do we develop them, right? We have. The, sub the parser subclass is the grammar. You override a certain production whenever you want an, uh, to transform the output. You do super that production, and you put the action there, or the transformation on top, right? This is it. Now, we want to go a step further. And what's the step further in a you know, strong engineering, to have a strong engineering practice? What was, you know? What do you need to have? You need to have tests. I mean, there is no real thing. You can't build something like this and not have tests because it quickly becomes so intricate, it's so difficult to do, to use, that it's just difficult. Without tests, you're pretty much lost. So, but that's the cool thing. With Petit Parser also comes with a, a, a nice port for a dedicated test suite. So. <coughs> First, um, this is how um, I'll show you this. This is the dedicated infrastructure. So, if you have um, if you have your PP, you, you can write your grammar MSC grammar test. You subclass from PP composite test, composite parser test, and then you override the parser class. You specify that parser class is going to be whatever parser you want, and afterwards. You will just do something like this. So test whatever. Then you say self parse one two three rule 
hash natural. And this is it. And then you will just write a test that will test this one against that particular sub production in your overall parser. So like this, you can go really nicely bottom up and test all the way, all the time. You can really do nicely test-driven development. It's really, really nice. And the other cool thing is that you want to keep this one, one test on a method, one simple thing like this on one method. First, because you can, you can nicely document here what do you mean by it. So you can see exactly what exactly, not just to give the string, but you can also document in the name of the method why did you give that, uh, why this one, right? So for example, this one should have been uh, simple natural, should have been, right? or no, multiple natural, because it has multiple of them, right? We should also have one with one character, for example, something like that. And then afterwards, if you have this one, right, then you are on the parser level. So for the parser one, you, you do exactly like you did for the on when you created the parser. You subclass your you subclass your um, uh, the the grammar test. Then you have the same the same method. You override that. You say super test natural. And the the side effect of parse rule is that it populates the result instance variable. And then you can just say assert that instance the result is something, 123. So now I would like you to do exactly that. So I would like you to now override, so to, to subclass my number grammar with my number parser and the production number, or let's, let's just do the natural. Natural should return a, na a number instead of the string, okay? And then we want to test that. So first, we will create a PP MSE uh, or a PP my, my number grammar test that will test one, two, three against natural. And then afterwards, in the subclass, we will create this method. Okay? Who's with me? Okay, who has a question? Yes? Yes, in no, in parse rule. In parse rule, there is an implicit end. Yes. We actually solved this problem a couple of weeks ago. We didn't figure out what, we just got uh, uh, successes in our tests, and it would fail in the real, <laughs> in, on, the real on the real things. Yes. Okay, other questions? Oh, right, I forgot to say that. Let me just show it to you. So if you search for it, then you find it. It's in already in the image. So the superclass is PP Composite Parser Test. So let's do that. So let we, uh, you create the subclass of your number grammar, that is the number parser. Then you create the grammar test, and you create the parser test for, one, for the natural production. But you can't run it. If you have a test, then you get an error for for that particular problem. If you don't, ha if it is, if it doesn't match, it's an error. A runtime error in the test. I understand. Yes, yes, it's beautiful. Okay, so yes, for the, for the 
Je ne sais pas de quoi, mais je ne sais pas de quoi. 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 Yes. Yeah, thank you. Great. So this is supposed to be a mineable parser test? Mineable parser, it should, it should subclass from PP composite parser test. Yeah, that's, what, that's, that's very good. Yes. So I just do it, I should, this should say I should test from this. Uh, test natural, that's fine. Okay. You can say, look, it's here, look, parse, it does self parse, oh, okay. uh, then we have this predefined yes. helper. Parse. But the only one thing should not be my number parser, well, you can do that too. Yeah. It yeah. should be ideally you should have a grammar and then it subclass it with the number parser. That, that's that's what that's, that's what, what is missing. Yeah, right. that's what I was missing. Okay. First, okay. first you need to say parse. And then you, you also have to sub uh, to to specify in the parser class. You have oh, to specify. Let me just let me just let you change that. Maybe. I did that. Oh, you did from here. Sorry. Okay, go back go back to the other one. So here be parse one two. Okay, so we just have that but number. But you still have to specify which grammar you yeah, want. No, I'll do it there. I'm just doing what I understand. Here is, uh, Rule. Oh, okay, count natural. Exactly, natural. Okay, so that works. Okay, so I've got, so now I've got that. Now I have to create another class. No, 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 no. First you need to do, to override this method, parse the class. Because you have to specify, you have to tell the test class which parser should it actually use, oh, like what sorry. is self. Sorry, right? what, what's, what's the name of the method? The parser class. Okay. But it's in the, exactly. Yeah. Parser class, it should just return the class. Okay. Right? Yeah, so my number parser, right? My number parser, yeah. That's all I have to do? Yeah, that's oh, all okay. you have to do. And now I you have to be able to, you should be able to run, run the test. Yeah. To run the test, just press Alt T. Yeah. And of course, uh, some problem. You parser probably, class, you did not, I you didn't. I yeah. must have typed it wrong. Exactly. <laughs> Wouldn't be the so you you time. would see you would see it you, you see an item yes. a green item right no it's overriding properly good test to begin now of course it's um, oh, it apparently is unable to no parse no, no, because it. I'm parsing that exactly so you should put one two three yeah. in there but you will still yeah. right but now this is the grammar your number parser is actually a number grammar yeah. And now you should subclass it. Subclass parse to. Let's rename that to one to my number par my number grammar. Absolutely practical. Practical. No, no, yeah. you're not in the wrong. Yeah. yeah. So this should be my number grammar. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Accept. Yeah. Fine. Now you subclass that. Yes, just have I'll see, copy, put yeah, it there. Okay, yeah, I, I work on a different one. It's yeah, very tiny. my number parser. Okay, and then yeah. I don't need the instance variables. No, exactly, you don't need the instance variables at all. So it will complain otherwise. Yes, very well. Okay. And now you're overriding natural. Okay, so natural, yeah, natural. So you will do something like this. Oh, okay. Right? Okay. And then you will apply the action to the output. Right. And then the token will be probably a collection, uh, uh, um, an array of, right. of characters. And you have to transform that into numbers. Probably you will just say as number or something like that to right. the parse, to the string. Okay? Okay. And then you return that. And then you will subclass the my number parser okay. test with your real number parser test. Yeah, so I should, I should rename it. Exactly, the grammar, then so on. Yeah. Hmm? Which is something which should be rejected? Um, it, can you look at the implementers of parser rule? Oh wait, no, I, that's a good question. So I have the following question. The question is, how do we write an assertion that fails? 
right? So something like this. So I will look at parse rule, implementers, browse that, fail rule, right? No, but it's our format. It's it's not your. Yes, it's not, yes exactly. So who managed to create the the sub the parser subclass? Who created the parser subclass? Yeah, my my guy tried. Yes. I see. Yeah. Who created the grammar test? Yeah. Who created the grammar test? Who created the parser test? Type, type, type. <laughs> <laughs> so are we fine? Do we do we just move on? Sorry? Do we just move on or we still sit a bit? We wait? Well, the grammar, the grammar test tests the grammar which means it tests the correctness of the input. The parser is responsible with the output, with transforming to a certain output. And the parser test will then, so you see, in, um, in the parser, in the, in, the grammar, in the grammar test, I'm simply checking whether the, it's correct. And then in the, in the subclass, I have test natural, and here I'm asserting that the result has a certain value, right? Yes, question. Yeah, so are there ways to um, isolate the test? Because right now we're using a string that has um, one, two, three in the superclass, and then we're, um, or is it in? No, it's in the superclass, yeah. right? And then I say super test natural, and I assert the value. So actually there is one certain case that depends on the assertion of another case. Yes, but if your grammar does not work, your, your parser <laughs> should fail too. So there's no issue there, right? And then you, I think it's good to, it's, I think it's very cool to read. This, what we're saying is that in this particular context, we're talking about a very domain specific, um, if, you have, if you prefer a different kind of test infrastructure, fine. But this is something that is given to you, it's a pattern. It works really well in practice. So we, we tested it on, we built several or tens of grammars, mm -hmm. and it works really well. And if you just have loads of tests, the cool thing is it also boosts your confidence because you'll have all of a sudden 500 tests like nothing. Yeah. I mean, it's not, it's not, I like yes, yes. But um, like what I also like about doing is like if I have um, the input data for the test, and then I can see what the result should be in it. Like this, it's, that's, that's what I mean. Not yeah, but look, with, with the Omni browser, if you click on the test, because it's it's overriding, right? And you can just go there. So, yes. Yeah, sure, of course. If it's a, s <laughs> but if you put, if you, do you want to put it in the production? Usually, you want to put it in the action, the self help. Yeah, in the action. But then usually it's fine. If you put a self, mm. but make sure that you don't return the wrong thing. Make sure that it's not the halt. Is uh, there's no self halt no, at no, the no, end. No, Let's to see. I want to put it in the, the block here. Yeah, exactly. No, put tokens yeah, halt. Yeah. Yeah. Tokens halt. Not self. But if you do self halt, it will the, the end of it will be return self. If you proceed right, so you just mm. say tokens halt. Yeah, so that's okay, and then you can still have the halt and proceed, and still have mm -hmm. everything fine. Mm -hmm. No, but just be in the te in your test and say alt t. Yes. Yeah, yeah that's what we did, but we just. Yeah, I understand. Failure. But you don't get there. Oh. Yeah, I think the failure is in the in your. Um, because I did it. But oh check. Oh. I did it. Uh, I put the grammar. Uh, but this one, this sh one show me the error. The error. I want to see the error. No? Which assertion yeah, failed? So uh, how you have a you have a cache problem.
you did not override parser class. Oh. So you are you're using the other the wrong thing. So do not forget that you need to override in your test, you need to override parser class, right? This is important. So also in the in the parser test you have to specify that so that you can just switch nicely. Okay? Oh, but coming back to your question about uh, reading nicely, actually, I now remember. So what I do is I actually usually press the implementers. And because they have descriptive names, these tests, they are unique in the image. Okay, okay. And then you can, you can just sh move between them. So it's, it circumvents a bit the problem that you have. Yes, I understand. Definitely. But this is how I solve it. Now I, I remember better. Okay, other questions? <laughs> yes, yes? I get the way it reads in the first and doesn't read back. Are you sure that you overwrote parser class in your parser test? Yes, I did. But for my you didn't put the action? The Yankee is where I get the problem. Okay. So who else has a problem? Right, one here, one there. Where, where else? What kind of problem do we have here? Uh, another uh, question. So I, I missed the point where the configuration uh, uh, grammar mm -hmm. and the array and uh, uh, all grammar doesn't work. Ah, OK. Um, I, I'll come back to you. Now, so who's with me? OK. Just, uh, just one tiny effort from you. I know that it's late. I know. So five more minutes, I'm asking, because it's five to six. So one thing is still left there, isn't it? OK, so we have tests. What's the next thing? Huh? Sorry? Use the grammar. Use the grammar. But what's, you know, engineering, what's the, where do we love to live in small talk? In the debugger, right? And as you saw, I mean, when you have an error here, it's like hell. You don't understand anything because it's like PP, sequence parser, and action parser, and woo, I don't know where am I. So this is where this nice um, interface comes into play. So if you uh, look into the world menu, tools, petite parser, then you have a dedicated editor. By the way, this is built with Glamour. I can't stop <coughs> not making a bit of advertisement. <laughs> and yeah. so if we take a look at the MSE grammar, right? So these are all the classes that inherit from uh, PP composite parser. And these are the, it's like normal, the normal browser, right? But you also have this nice little thing over here, mm. right? So then if somebody wants a more, BNFic like notation. They have it in a graphical form in here. It's just an output, right? That's not a raw thing to it. It's an output. In this case, yes. It, it could be. Right? It's not, so nothing is impossible. But it's not the whole thing, but that could be a parser for the DNA. But then no, no. What, he, what he's saying is that it's not a visually editing tool for the grammar. Oh, no, it is. Well, it's just, it's just exactly, just a matter of implementation. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's all. <laughs> yeah, definitely. But so it's, it's not debatable. It's possible. Would be nice to have. Right. So now another thing that is available here, and this is now based on, uh, this is a simple visualization based on Mondrian. What you have here is just a nice place to check whether you have, you know, what kind of cycle. So to take a look at the deep grammar. So this is starting from this particular production. Um, it's basically providing the entire, the entire dependency grammar that goes uh, from it further, right? So it's just, it's just um, a map, just a map for this. That, that start from this particular production. 
One very nice thing is this one here. So this is a randomly generated example, right? So it's, it, this is, um, it goes the other way around. So just to say, it's like a nice debugging tool. First thing said, oh, let's see, what does it debug? Does it make any sense? What does it generate? Does it make any sense? It just generates one random number for it. This is simply brilliant. All right, so for example, you see here, my grammar is not nice. <laughs> right? So it's just, just like that. And you just generate it out of the test case. And you just by yes. Right, so it just generates one every time you click on one thing. Now, let's do something really nice. So now if I click here, then I have my dynamic part. And then I say, OK, so now let me, you know, I enter something in here. And then, well, please parse that, right? So it's, I selected the natural, so I'm actually testing the natural, the natural parser. So now basically, it's okay, that the result is one, two, three. If I want, I can uh, inspect this result. They have one, two, three. But if I want, I can also go and debug. Now, this is not really uh, exciting because I didn't have, it's not that much to debug, but let's take number. So let's take something minus one, two, three, dot four, five. And I say debug. What this one here says is this. So you have a tree of, of, all, your, of all your named parsers. Everything that is bold, um, it means success, right? It, it, it succeeded. And so in here, we have a success at the root. So that's fine. Our old parser um, successfully parsed. And this is the value that it produced. So every then you can check. And by the way, you see, if you have a nicely produced um, um, tokenized output and you have a generic grammar, then you can just, you know, with a debugger, you can just jump into it. So that's really great to debug your problem to see how far did it go. You go until where the last boldness is. And then you check, OK, where did it get and why not? So why did it fail the rest of it? And then you know exactly where the character is. So let's make it, let's create an error here. Let's put something like this. No, it said that it's an optional. That e is optional. You see that the parent succeeded. It's just that E did not. So now I will just say that. Hmm, there's an error. You right click and say parse. Okay, so you see here I tried to parse something, A, and then there was an error, right? So this one is not is not succeeded because this one failed. Basically. So let's take something that is larger. So I'll now select all the elements. I'll select the whole thing. And make a random example. <laughs> right? So you parse that, and this is the, the output. This is the debugger. And then you see where it failed and where it didn't. And so basically, every time it fails, there is a so it's a backtracking going on there, right? It tries, and then whoop, we fall back and go to the choice, right? So if you want to check you know, how much, back, um, how much backtracking was there, you have here this nice little chart. Right? So this is for, for testing your, the, the performance of, um, uh, of, your, of your grammar. Now, ideally, you have something that goes like that. That's the ideal path. Right? So that means that every advancement is a hit. It's a good advancement. And every time you have something like this, there's a backtracking going on there, right? Because we tried, no, we try, we try. So the more this of this, this uh, of more back, more backtracking you have, the least performant your grammar is. Right? The less back, the less backtracking you have, the better it is. Yes. The blue, line. the blue line is just to just to see where the progress is. Um, then you have also like a couple of things, so to see where exactly you spend your time. So 
this is like the profile, the time in milliseconds spent on each production. This is the amount of times. Right? So in any case, the debugger is really, really important. So and, and it's dedicated to what you what you need. What you need from here. So that's basically it. So again, this, the way it works is that you choose, you choose whatever the selection is on top. This is what it gets executed at the bottom. So now suppose that now I will just pick the array parser, and I, I save that. Then I get an array, and then let me just have a pretty printer. The pretty printer in this case just put every puts every. Let's let's take another example. Farmix package. Something like this. So the pretty printer will put it one below the other, let's say, in this case. There are several other things that are already built in into, into Pedit Parser. Yes, question? Well, I, so a nice place where you can find grammars is some grammars, not the one that you just mentioned, is into the petit parser repository. So if you go there, for example, you have a par, uh, grammar for small talk, you have a grammar for different other things, not too many, but then there are some other extra. It's in the, repo, in the official repository. So source.lucaswrangley.ch slash petit. But um, we have um, Alberto Bacchelli that worked on a Petit Java uh, parser. There is Fabrizio Perin that works on a um, SQL parser. So, and I heard that, that we will have soon a Petit C parser. So it's great. They, they have to give you time. They will give you time, yes. I, I'm saying this publicly. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh, the, the Java parser? The, jam, the grammar works, but the apps, apps syntax tree is not complete. Okay, it's parsed 1.6. 1.6, it should parse, yes. Okay. Other questions? Yes? Have you done this stuff where you're parsing in a lot of stuff and then you're producing a package that really swipes out faster than everything? No, but it's. It would be pretty hard. No, no, I'm definitely not. Just. There was no use case. No, what, um, no there, is, there is one use case. So if somebody wants to take on a nice project, is to get an uh, NTLR. Um, the, t this is this uh, common format for uh, expressing parsers. The environment. Right. It's, this is the name of the environment. They have their, their, their notation. So if you could parse that and produce out of that petit parser grammars, that would be great, right? Because we would just basically would be able to import all the grammars that already exist in this uh, in this community, which which are significant. So there are hundreds of grammars there. Yeah. Other questions? I have only one important thing to say. So if you have other questions in the meantime, no. So this is what you do, right? So you have. The, this is the, um, the dedicated user interface. Now, so we have the petite parser. There are several things you have to remember. So first of all, parser is like parsers for small talk and parsers for parsing challenged people like I used to be. So what I hope is that my goal here was today is to get you actually do a parser that you can go over this barrier that actually, you know, you can do it, right? You can you just take your small talk. It's the documentation is there. I, you show you 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 actually read it yourself. We learn how to read, you know, where to find the information. There's more into par petit parser, but you've already got a nice introduction into it. You know where to find more information. The rest is plain small talk. You have these dedicated tools, which is really cool some really cool piece of engineering. And so we're using this heavily in, in Moose. So for us, is is, a, is an important piece because like this, we can uh, tackle 
domain specific languages or other kinds of languages that are otherwise quite difficult to to approach we have this uh, with petit parser there's also again this deep integration into small talk not just from from a syntactic point of view the fact that you have this nice as parsers everywhere so that you can it's nice to 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 write or easy to write but it's the design it's extremely elegant and s simple and it's easy to understand and so just because you know petit parser is such a cool thing what i would like you now so i would like that um, we give a round of applause to lucas because he really did a cool job Oh, so thank you. <laughs>